I'm going to show you two easy ways that you can make your jaw harp play louder. Let's get into it. So the first way to make your jaw harp louder is to change your technique. And I'm going to go over a couple ways you can do that. So your first problem is to, is, it may be that you're not forming a complete resonant chamber. Now what I mean by that is that when you put the jaw harp to your teeth, you're using your mouth, your throat, your chest cavity, um, this whole apparatus as a resonant chamber, similar to how a guitar, when you pluck the strings, the body of the guitar resonates and causes the sound. Without that body on a guitar, you wouldn't be able to hear very much. And that's what you see when you play an electric guitar, because when there's when you turn off the electronic pickups, there's no there's not really much sound. But on an acoustic guitar, with that whole that resonant chamber, you get a nice, rich, full sound. So if your mouth is not cover, is not see, making a seal on the the jaw harp, that may lead to a quieter jaw harp. So make sure that your your lips are on the inner frame right here, and they are working together to. Um, with your teeth to form a resonant chamber. So if, if, you're, if you're playing like this with your lips set back a little bit, you may you know, experience this where your sound is not as rich as it could be. But if you use your lips to you know, really get in there and form that resonant chamber, you'll get a fuller sound. So that's one way to do it. Another way that you can do it is to actually um, change where you have the jaw harp. Now, you got to be careful with this. You don't want to go too far over. Um, but if you are playing the jaw harp on the left, you know, on the, on just one side of your mouth, you're only getting a benefit of part, part of your mouth as that resonant chamber. So if you move it over, to me that's a sweet spot is when my, you know, my right tooth is like lined up with the edge of the inner frame. Um, that really helps me to get a good seal and also uh, um, get more coverage on the jaw harp. Now, if you get even further, you can um, catch your lip and pinch. So that's an, an unpleasant thing. So make sure that you have enough space here so that the striker has enough room to go between your lips and teeth and not cause any issues. One thing you don't want to do in, as far as your technique is to pluck the jaw harp harder. Um, it's a bad habit because you can get into a situation where, I mean, that's fine. It's a, that's a fine amount of force, but if you get in, into any more, and if you try to um, push the striker this way, um, you can um, lose control of it and it might smack you in the lips or the teeth, and so that's not good. So if you can, try to get use your technique without trying to add too much force and so that you can keep your mouth and lips happy. So that's kind of the technique that you can do. The second part that you can do to change how your jaw harp sounds is to actually examine the jaw harp itself. So I'm going to zoom in because that's going to make this easier to talk about. All right. So if you notice in between this jaw harp has um, quite big gaps between the striker and the inner frame. You can really see in between there. And especially as it gets closer to the outer frame, if you see those are some quite large gaps there. And the problem with that is that that leads to an unsaturated sound. And so I chose this harp to demonstrate with because I don't care about it as much. Um, I have a harp that I prefer to play with. But if I move the, the, these, the inner frame even farther apart, check out what it does to the sound. And now as I push the, the inner frames together, let's see what happens. First off, the inner frame is colliding with the striker, so I went too far. So this isn't perfect because I, I still am having some collision there, but you can already tell that the jaw harp is louder. Um, it's got a more full sound. So that's another way you can do it. It's an easy way. So be very careful so you don't damage your harp. And if you go easily, you can get to a point where you have a nice saturated sound um, and you have the volume that you want. I recommend to try changing your technique first before you start trying to bend the jaw harp because 
sometimes you can go past the point of no return and bend your draw harp in a way that you can't bend it back. So just be careful about that. So the last thing that you can do, this is number three. I said there's only two ways because this, this, the third way really doesn't count, but that is to just get another draw harp that is more saturated. So if you, let's look at this one instead. Yeah, so if you notice that the, the, satur the, the distance in between the inner frame and the, um, the striker is much smaller. And even though this harp is smaller, Let's check out how it sounds. Amazing, even though this harp is smaller than this one I was just demonstrating with, you can tell that this one has much more volume just because the design, the, the inner frame is closer to the reed all along uh, the reed's length so um, you can get more volume that way. So those are some easy tips to get a higher volume with your draw harp. If you are new to the jaw harp and want to learn the basic techniques, make sure and check out this video. I share all there is that you need to know to get started playing the jaw harp. Also, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be sharing a lot more about many other instruments. And if you'd like to join me in that journey and learn more about music and instruments in general, this is the right channel for you. Thanks for watching.